Can religion evolve with the advance of science? Of course it can. Here's an example. Consider the eclipse. It's just about the most mysterious celestial event possible for early humans to witness. So of course we attempted to explain them with mythological cosmology long before we had any real science to throw at the mystery. One of my favorite mythological takes on the eclipse is the Hindu god Rahu. Now he's not the oldest eclipse deity, but his story and iconography are wondrously gruesome. He was once a proud Asher, but hey, he wanted immortality. So he drank the divine nectar. But before the drop passed his throat, all power Vishnu decapitated him. The power of the nectar made his disembodied head immortal, and so he continually seeks his revenge on the two planetary deities who ratted him out to Big Vish, the sun and the moon. As such, ravenous Rahu regularly ascends into the sky and attempts to swallow the sun or the moon. But since he's disembodied, his meals fall right back out his neck stub. There you go. Eclipse is explained. Now I know what you're wondering. How is there any possible room for discussion of science in all of this? I mean, surely science arises and simply wipes away our tales of disembodied gods and swallowed moons. Well, for starters, there has always been less conflict between science and Hinduism, due in some part to distinct linguistic differences between teleological and causative wise. As Professor Varandraja V. Raman, author of Truth and Tension in Science and Religion, points out, there's the, why do I exist, that a biologist can answer, and then there's the, why do I exist, that a priest answers. Also, in today's world, we increasingly see an attempt to protect set-in-stone religious stories from the ever-evolving story that science gives us. I mean, heaven forbid, new findings force us to reconsider ancient Babylonian cosmology. Two millennia ago, Indian stargazers divided the cosmos into seven geocentric planets, or graha, and then they set aside disastrous phenomena like meteors, comets, and eclipses, and classified those as a pata. So on one hand you had cyclical order, and on the other hand you had ominous chaos. But of course eclipses follow a pattern as well. And in 499 CE, the great Indian mathematician astronomer Aryabhata introduced a mathematical theory of eclipses that pretty much nailed it. We just have our two lunar nodes, earth shadows, moon shadows, no demons required. And so Rahu received something of a promotion, along with his headless body, which took the name Ketu. Instead of being a chaotic Adpata, they were upgraded to ordered Graha. While not actual planets, they took on the distinction of shadow planets. Cosmology is the human attempt to understand humanity's place in the universe. It can be religious, scientific, philosophical, or some mix of the three. But it's fascinating to consider examples where science is allowed to answer the sort of questions science answers, while leaving the teleological concerns to the gods. So what about you? What goes through your mind when you look up at the stars or at an eclipse? Do you think about the gods? Do you think about science? And which one gives you the most satisfying answers? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button so we can keep these videos coming at you.